Hello, my name is Clint Penyon. I'm in Mr. Weeman's ME360 Fluids course at SDSU. In this video, I'm gonna be showing you how to do a textbook problem 6.60. And I'm gonna start by reading the problem. Uh, potential flow against the flat plate, uh, this is represented in figure one, is represented by this stream function is equal to A, a constant times X and Y. Um, and it's, this type of flow is commonly called a stagnation point, since it can be used to describe the flow in the vicinity of the stagnation point at O, this is point O. By adding a source of strength M at point O, that stagnation point flow against the flat plate with a bump is obtained in figure two. Determine the relationship between the bump height H, the constant A, and the source strength M. All right, so. I wrote out the, I drew the figures to help your understanding later. And I wrote out what we're trying to do in this problem. So in this problem, we're given a stream function, right? A stream function describes the motion of fluid in the system. And it's sort of represented as a vector field. If you're confused about what a vector field is, it's just a, think of a, any kind of X and Y plane with where you got points on them at certain uh, coordinates but each point is a vector. So it's got like an arrow coming out. So say you had a point here, you got this swoopy arrow to represent the flow of fluid going through the system. And adding this bump here kind of changes these vectors a little as seen how they kind of curve out sideways more, but you still gonna have a stagnation point right here. And at your stagnation point, your vector, you don't, you have no vector there because it's completely resisted. So. Just imagine that at this point and this point, your stagnation points, your vector is going to be zero. All right, so we're going to, the way we're going to do this, the way we're going to do this problem is going to take the stream functions and find a stream function for this figure with the added bump there. And what this type of problem, if I could give it a category from class, the thing, the example was called uh, the superposition of basic point potential forces example. But uh, the, the general gist of it is you're going to have a new source function written out called source function is equal to psi uniform plus psi uh, source. Your psi source is given to you in the figure. It's at this point here. Your psi uniform is going to be very similar it's gonna be the exact same as the figure one psi at uh, this point. Um, so to start the problem off, we're gonna change the or this first stream function equation we were given in terms of circular coordinates because the vectors are represented in terms of your magnitude r and your direction theta. So we're gonna turn this a of x a of x, y into circular coordinates. So what that means is x is going to be r cosine of theta, and your y is going to be r sine of theta, and your a is going to be a. A is just a constant. I don't think it's area in this case, but we're gonna plug these into this. So you're gonna have your stream function is equal to a parentheses r cosine theta times r sine of theta. And then you're gonna simplify it. You're gonna have a r squared cosine theta sine of theta. All right, so now we're gonna use a double angle theorem to just simplify the equation more. So that what that's going to be, the formula I'm talking about is sine two theta is equal to two sine theta cosine theta. So then the, what this becomes now, your y uniform. This is going to be a r square half sine two theta. This is just a means to simplify things so we don't have to work with cosine and sine. It just makes it easier. And for the y source, that's actually pretty easy. That's just a formula that was given to us in class. Uh, it was y source is equal to q over 
2 pi uh, theta, just a big theta sign. And uh, I'm getting this version of the formula from the textbook. M and Q are equivalent. They're both flow rate VA. But since this is asking for a source strength, I'm going to have the M in there. So it's going to be M over 2 pi theta. So now we're going to have a new stream equation, stream function. And that's going to be is equal to stream, the y uniform plus the y source. So it's going to be A, it's going to be, I'm going to put the, I'm going to put uniform first. I'm going to have AR square half sine <clears throat> two theta plus this. Okay, so now we're gonna take our stream function. We're gonna use two other formulas we got from lecture. And it's also in the textbook. But we're gonna have it in terms of the R and the theta. Um, this is like a dynamics term, but I believe it's a relative velocity and tangential velocity. So what these equations are is VR sub R is equal to one over R, your derivative of your stream equation in terms of theta. And then your V theta, V sub theta is going to be negative, your derivative of your stream function, but this time in terms of R. So what this ends up looking like is you're gonna have your VR is equal to, so now we're gonna take the derivative of this equation in terms of R. So what, what happens to that? It's, it's going to, oh yeah, it's also one over R times a r squared half sine two theta plus. I think it's easier to just write everything out so I don't get too confused. So d over e theta. So what that means is we're going to start taking the derivative. So the only thing we're taking the derivative of in this case is just this theta and the sine two theta because those are the only factors that have theta. You're going to pretty much just be pretending that all oh, this is just one constant that you multiply everything out by at the end. So what's the derivative of sine? It's cosine. And then you do a chain rule on the inside derivative of two theta. That's just two. So this becomes one over r ar squared half cosine two theta times two. So this is going to cancel out. Plus the derivative of theta in terms of theta that's like taking derivative of x, it's just one. So plus m over two pi. Then we're gonna distribute out the r, so we're gonna cancel out this. I'm gonna have an r over here now. So now your vr is equal to uh, ar cosine two theta plus m over two pi r. So now we're gonna find V theta and that's going to be negative the stream function again, but in terms of R. Write everything else. All right, so first off, looking at this side, there is no R attached to it. There's no R attached to it, so this just cancels out. It's like the taking derivative of one. But on this side, you got R here, the derivative of R squared, that's just two R. So you're gonna have negative A two R over a half sine two theta, this cancels. So your V theta is just left with negative A R sine two theta. All right, so to get an equation that relates to these three factors, we're gonna take the stagnation point here. So if you're just looking at the figure, you'd see that the stagnation point in terms of Cartesian XY coordinates, it's just going to be zero, mm, uh, your R, your radius. But if we want in terms of uh, circular coordinates, then then your 
saturation point will be at theta r. So it's going to be theta is equal to 90 degrees is equal to pi over two because it's uh, referencing the origin. And then your R is just going to be H. So your saturation point is at pi over two H. All right, so now to get an equation that has these, at the saturation point, your stream function is zero, right? So if you use your V theta equation, everything's just gonna cancel out because you're just gonna have zeros equal to all of this stuff. But at your VR equation, you have an added, you have an add sign here. So it's more segmented. So you actually create an equation from that. So we're gonna plug in the VR at the saturation point now. And that's going to get you zero is equal to A plug in HSR two times pi over two plus <clears throat> m over two pi times h. So this cancels out the cosine of pi, that's just negative one. So this side is gonna be negative, so we can just move that to this side. So then you're gonna have a h <laughs> is equal to m over two pi times h. If you want in terms of h, if you want in terms of a, you can just divide everything by h, but if you want in terms of h, you're gonna multiply this h out and divide by a. So then you're gonna have h squared is equal to m over two pi times h. Yeah, that's an equation that relates these three factors. You can be finished here. You could also have it in terms of A if you wanted to. Sorry, this is supposed to be an A. If you wanted it in terms of A, you could just had A is equal to M over two pi H squared. And finishing touch. And yeah, that's it. That's how you do the problem. And thank you.